the U.S. Ariadna Ranger Forest. U.S. Ariadna maintains a spirit of the American dream in a frontier territory. Harassed by hostile antipode tribes, the U.S. Ariadna colonists defend a way of life already forgotten in the human sphere. USRF, U.S. Ariadna Ranger Force, also known as the Armor 3 Sectorial, has the weakest camo game in Ariadna. But it makes up for it with lots of bikes, relatively armored troops, lots of airborne deployment, flamethrowers, oh my god, at the flamethrowers, and the amazing Devil Dog team. Their line troops are tougher build than most of the other order monkeys that you see in Ariadna, and the Sectorial is almost entirely shock resistant. They even managed to bring a few troops with MSV-1 to deal with the pesky camo markers because they don't have any, so nobody else can either. Not so much access to the truly horrific weapons of the Ariadna arsenal like portable auto cannons, but they've got APHMGs, a few AP Spitfires, and heavy rocket launchers to bring plenty of pain. Plenty means playing a combination of the US Marine Corps-esque assault gunnery with some sneaky infiltrating rangers slipping around and breaking necks in the opponent's back lines. And they also, their big character, Roger Van Zandt. He who walks from your deployment edge. Yes, he's not the only one that can do it nowadays, but he was the original. He is the OG, and he's still fantastic. They don't need to have all this camo to get heavy weapons or specialists behind enemy lines. All right, we're going to start getting into each army unit. We're going to start out with the grunts. All right, so the grunts, they're still pretty good. They're really good. So unlike most of the medium infantry that changed over from N3 to N4, they did not get that 4-4 movement. They kept their 4-2 movement, which you got to have some shortcomings somewhere because this is the main unit. Everybody else has light infantry. These guys are medium infantry. So they kept their 3 armor. So you still have 11 BS, 11 Fizz, 12 Whip, but they have the 3 armor and their availability is total. Notable mentions I want to give a shout out to from here. The AP sniper rifle that has plus one damage and shock for 20 points and half an SWC. That's fantastic. It'd be great for a core. Also, an honorable mention here is the infiltration grunt. This no longer has inferior infiltration where you have to roll and they end up over there on your opponent's side. These guys can just infiltrate on your side of the board on an 11. Yes, 11 is not great. So you got a 50-50 chance, but they have a heavy flamethrower and a light shotgun for 11 points and 0.5 SWC. These are guys are great for the back line because it's a large teardrop template with a heavy flamethrower. It is continuous damage. So if they do fail to save, they're going to have to make multiple saves. And if they get the infiltration, which they're going to because it's you're staying on your side of the board, you got little roadblocks full of large teardrops all over your side of the board that the enemy is going to have to deal with. And they are armor three, so you can get these guys in cover. So you're looking at an armor six heavy flamethrower. You don't want to get too close to these guys. They're, your opponent is going to have to waste orders to deal with that alone. Moving on, we're going to go to the Minutemen. Minutemen are your basic HI heavy infantry for U.S. Ariadna. Now, I've been seeing a bunch on the forums be like, oh, they're just not as good as Marauders, blah, blah, blah. These guys are great because they got a bunch of toolbox pieces that you didn't have before. So I'm going to shout out to the lieutenant with his plus one command token. Now, for those of you that didn't know, for all the command tokens, now you can spend a command token. If you're taking second turn, you can put something into suppression. Also, before deployment, you can use another command token to hold back an additional reserve. So having two reserve on your deployment. So you're not having to get rid of your original four. You've got a whole other command token to do that. And he's got a rifle and a light flamethrower. That's got plus one burst, so two small teardrops. So he's a wonderful lieutenant to bring, and he's only 24 points. You could make a core of Minutemen. They also got the Minuteman NCO with an AP HMG. Dude, that's amazing! And NCO, so that's going to give you an additional order. 
And the last one we're going to mention is the Minuteman with his BS attack shock and an X visor on an AP rifle. With an AP rifle and so they got armor three, Fizz 13, BS 13. I don't know about you guys. I think it's fantastic because the AP rifle is going to be hitting on flats before negatives up to 32 inches because of the X visor. That's great. I would bring a core of Minutemen and everything here is pretty cheap. You can't run a 400 point limited insertion with this with these guys, but you can get a whole thing of Minutemen here and I would fill that sucker with X visor AP rifles. That's dangerous and I love it. Also putting these guys into suppression that have zero negatives because of the X visor. Moving on, we're going to get the Foxtrots. Foxtrots didn't change a whole lot. Your basic go-to, your Ford Observer, Rifle, Flash Pulse, and Shock Mines, which is now just your anti-personnel mines, are just called Shock Mines, is still only 18 points. He is a basic guy that does so much for you. Fizz 13, Whip 13, and Total Terrain. When you guys play the Terrain rules, so he's moving on a 5-5, Total Terrain. He's still got the Stealth, still got the Mimetism, Infiltration. He's got all the things that you need. And the last one is regular sniper rifle. I've rarely seen Foxtrots go, like, the you, people usually just bring two. I like to bring that sniper rifle because, yes, it's only BS-11, but you can just go crit fishing. Your opponent's gonna have to deal with it because they don't want you to get lucky and hit it. Bring the sniper rifle. Sniper rifle is fantastic. Boarding shotgun isn't bad for 20 points, but if I was gonna bring a third one, I would definitely bring the sniper rifle. Moving on, we got the hard cases. Hard cases did not change whatsoever. The only thing that really changed is instead of having ambush camo, now it's decoy one. That's what ambush camo is now. So if you ever see when you're looking on the special skills and you see decoy, that just means ambush camo. So they still got 11 BS. They still got their tactical bows, uh, 12 points for the light shotgun, 14 points for the rifle. These guys are still like, scared because you're like okay is it a fox trot is it a hard case hard cases can also because they have silent with their tactical bows is still silent so if you're taking out guys here and there they're not going to have a chance to turn around because they didn't hear anything in quotations so these are be wonderful attack pieces if you know how to use them correctly Moving on, the big bad, Roger Van Zandt, captain of the 6th Airborne Ranger Regiment. He's went down in price. He lost his executive order profile and instead gained NCO, which I think is so much better. So much better. As soon as this guy hits the field, you've got, you got two orders, basically. So he's a 4-4, 22cc, 13 BS, 13 Fizz, 14 Whip, and 2 Armor on Light Infantry. He's great. Martial arts level 2, courage, dodge an extra inch, parachutist deployment zone. As I said before, he's not the only one that can do this now, but he's the original. He's the OG. I love bringing Van Zant and just dropping him, especially when it's a poised-based mission. We gotta kill so many army points. You can drop this guy turn 3 in a very safe location and can win games. Moving on, the tractor mules. Now, tractor mules are not only for... U.S. Ariadna. However, they need to be mentioned because they're better now. They are not better. Their profile isn't better. However, being able to forward observe an ARO that can stop shots getting fired if you if you win, and now the enemy is targeted. Having the enemy targeted unless they get an engineer or spend an oh, entire order to reset out of it is wonderful. So bring your Katyusha for nine points and one SWC and just five times a turn, drop DA rounds on 16s. Because their BS is 10, but you're dropping on 16s. That's fantastic. Or you can bring the Uragan. I like bringing the Uragan because even if you don't, like for more defense type missions, if they are get targeted and you don't want to use the guided missile, then you can at least out to 32 for the year again. And out to 40 inches, you're on tens before negatives. Mavericks are so much better because how MSV1 now works. 
being able to see through smoke, shooting at a minus six. Their 8-4 move, 18 CC, 12 BS, 12 Fizz. They no longer get any negative to trying to dodge. It's still just a 12. Great. Whip 13, armor 3, because they are medium infantry on bikes. They are still impetuous, but they're in regular order, and they got a smoke grenade launcher. Smoke grenade launchers, yes, don't provide any pluses anymore in their range bands, but that's fine. That's fine. Your shooting on 12s isn't great. That's kind of how, if anybody of you that's been in the military, like myself, trying to shoot a grenade launcher, it's not precise. I think it's more realistic. I'm fine with it. So, MSV-1, they got an AP Spitfire for 1 SWC and 27 points. Fantastic. And the go-to, at least in everything that I've seen, is the submachine gun light rocket launcher is still 21 points and half an SWC. Great. Or if you want just a fast-moving specialist, grab that FO with a rifle and a flash pulse for 18 points. He's on a motorcycle. That is a fast specialist that can go out and complete objectives turn three. I love the Mavericks. I think everybody should bring a Maverick. At least one. All right, moving on. The Marauders. Now the Marauders. Marauders, they got a couple of profiles with MSV-1. They have their Harris. They have their core. They can duo. I love the Marauders. They got still 12 BS, 12 Fizz, 13 Whip, 3 Armor. They got forward. They, they kept their forward deployment with the medium infantry, which is great. The big profiles that you want to look at is your Marauder, who has MSV-1 and a sniper rifle plus 1 burst. He's 32 points and a half an SWC. I want you to think about this for just a, Even putting him in a Harris... It's a sniper rifle with a plus one burst. On the active turn, I'm shooting four sniper rifle shots. Dice are king in this game. And being able to have a whole nother dice where you usually have three, now I have four. That's great. That's fantastic. I think he's going to be the most seen marauder on the board. Is going to be the sniper rifle plus one burst. If you didn't like him, you want to go a little bit cheaper, you don't have the points, get the MSV-1 Heavy Rocket Launcher with Assault Pistols, 1.5 SWC, but he's only 23 points. He is one point more than the regular guy who's got a rifle and a heavy flamethrower for 22 points. He's one point more, and you get so much more out of it. That blast template with the Heavy Rocket Launcher, who still has continuous damage, is going to do some work. And they still got their lieutenant option for 22 points. He's a wonderful lieutenant to have. Moving on, we have the Devil Dog team. I love the Devil Dog team. And any good Ariadne player knows you got to abuse the Devil Dog teams. And they've went down in cost. Because they still have courage. They still got total immunity on the Devil Dog. Super jump, terrain aquatic, which makes sense. They're the Marines. Devil Dog is a term for a Marine. They still have vulnerability viral, and they're impetuous. They are irregular. But the basic profile has a chain rifle, smoke grenades, and your antipode with an AP heavy pistol and an AP close combat weapon for 23 points. That's great. Fantastic. And if you did want to go a little bit more expensive, get the heavy shotgun. His BS is only 10, but he's shooting on 16s with a heavy shotgun, and he's 33 points. Yeah, he lost his heavy pistol, but he has a heavy shotgun. That's going to be great. Your canine antipode is now peripheral synchronized, so they're just going to move together as per normal. Courage, dodge an extra inch, mimetism minus three, and sensor. You need to use the sensor. You don't have a lot of camo. Nobody else should have camo. We got to make it fair. Use the hell out of that sensor because you're going to run into stuff like Shesvasti that are going to just flood the field with dirty, dirty, dirty camo. So use the sensor so they really can't. The Antipode's got 6-6 six, six movement. He's fast as hell. With 20cc and his APCCW, he, he's going to put a whooping on somebody. He does. He's not the right for every single thing you want to go up against, but like everything... Choose your battles wisely. Devil Dogs are fantastic. All right, let's get into the 6th Airborne Ranger Regiment. The 6th Airborne Ranger Regiment is fantastic at what they do. 
They're very decently priced. They've got really good weapon set. I love these guys. They have parachutists so they can walk in from any side of the board except for the deployment zone, your opponent's deployment zone, from any table edge. And dropping back there with an AP Spitfire late turn one if you're going second or turn two where your opponent has already come up the field, now you can get behind these guys and shoot them with an AP Spitfire in the butt. There's nothing more thrilling and more satisfying than shooting your opponent in the butt with an AP Spitfire. The other guys are the FOs, they have submachine guns. They're 20 points, they got martial arts level 2, you're dodging extra inch, they have stealth, they got 12 BS, I think they're great. They're wonderful line infantry. They just drop down. Love it, love it, love it. And now we're moving on to the Desperados. Desperados had a big change because now they're only six points and you get to choose between the Heavy Pistol plus one burst or the Assault Pistol plus one burst, AP CCW weapon or a Shock CCW weapon, but they're only six points. Bring four of these guys. Fill out your normal list, your, fir- your top ten, as per normal, and then you can fill the last four in that second group with nothing but Desperados for tons of smoke and short-range fire. And that's just more order because they bring the Impetuous Order. You don't have to use the Impetuous Order because the change is too Impetuous, but I would use it just to have the chance to throw more smoke. Because they're fast. They're 8-4 movement, 21 CC, 11 BS, 13 fizz, so you're throwing smoke on 16s. That's pretty reliable. 13 whip, and they got an armor. But I love the Desperados. Hang on, we got the Blackjack. The Blackjack is the Blackjack. He is the big heavy infantry. They got 4 4 movement, they got 15 CC, 13 BS, 14 fizz. 13 whip, 5 armor, and 3 BTS. They got the 3 BTS, which is big for Ariadna, because Ariadna usually doesn't have BTS. They effectively have two wounds because of the Battle Ravage state, which is now Transmutation Wound. They didn't change a whole lot except for going up in points. They Each profile went up two points, but their SWC has gone down for the AP Heavy Machine Gun chest mines, and hey, they got a Panzerfaust, but it's 38 points. Uh, and then you got the T2 sniper rifle. This got a submachine gun, chest mines for one SWC, and still 38 points. You really need to pick your battles with it. it would Not even pick your battles. Pick what mission that these guys can really fit into, because they are kind of hit or miss, because they can either work out really, really well for you, or they can work out not as well. Because in their battle ravage state, uh, a lot of things go down. Their CC goes down. Their BS goes down a point, and their Fizz goes down a point, and their Armor goes down a point. But still, four Armor is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, I think they could have gotten a little bit better of a buff, but they didn't. You live with it. It's going to be fine. The models look great, though. If, if you just want the models, I would highly recommend getting the models because the models look fantastic. Moving on, the big bad. The Unknown Ranger is so worth it now and almost an auto-include because he was so bad before. He was so expensive for only one wound and that was it. He had one wound and nothing else to kind of help him stay alive. He is now... Oh my god. 6-2 movement, 23 CC, 13 BS, 13 Fizz, 13 Whip, 4 Armor. He still only has one wound, but he's got a multi-spectral visor level 1. Smoke is not going to affect him nearly as much. Nearly as much. Still got martial arts level 2, Courage, Dodge, an extra inch. Natural Born Warrior, which... Fine, you're not going to get to use any of your martial arts against me. Finally got shock immunity. Still has mimetism. He's a specialist operative. He's got tack awareness. He's got tactical awareness. He's giving you two orders. And you're going to want to bring him along with no wound incapacitation and stealth. You're going to want to bring this guy. You're going to want to put him in every link. You're going to wish you could have 
two of these guys, one for the Harris and one for the core. But he's going to be fantastic in either of them. He's a must, must have. I wouldn't really bring the AP rifle with the chain colt for 39 points. AP rifles range bands is only 8 to 16. It's not going to be what you want to do. You want to bring him because of his firepower and his survivability with four armor, his tack awareness, no wound in cap, and shock immunity. You want to bring the Mark 12 for 44 or the AP Spitfire for 47 and one SWC. I can I could go on and on about what you could do with the unknown ranger, but it's really pretty simple. Put him in a fire team and let him be your high burst weapon. For if you when you don't bring the Minuteman, you're gonna bring the Minuteman in the core. Throw him in there with a Marauder team. He's gonna be great. You won't regret grabbing up this model and getting him. And last but certainly not least, Grunt Intel Rosie Monroe, our dire foes character. She really didn't change a whole lot, but she really didn't need to change. She was fantastic to begin with, and she's still fantastic now. Still has 12 BS, Fizz 11, Whip 13, 3 armor. She's a grunt. She's a grunt. But has 4 deployment, 4 inches. Also has shock immunity. She's a specialist operative and dogged. She's got effectively 1.5 wounds on shock immunity. With a light rocket launcher, a light shotgun, and D charges. I love Rosie, and I put her in every single list. She's in some core or Harris. She's in some fire team somewhere. I love Rosie, and you should too. So that's U.S. Ariadna. I'm really liking them so far, and I'm going to play with them a little bit more to see like what's the best option, especially with the tactical window that we're all having to now run. Just remember, guys... It's not about, don't use the 10 and 5 anymore unless you just solely want to focus on the 10 and then, you know, throw some cheap orders in to the second group. Go 8 and 7 if you can get, when you get up to 15 orders. Make them decide, do I want to deal with the core or do I want to deal with the Harris? Because if you make them both about the same, which you can very easily do, make them decide which order pool that they want to take from. I love U.S. Ariadna, and I think they're going to be fantastic, just like they were in N3. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell icon for every time that we post something. You'll know about it, too. We love telling you about this stuff. We love going over it, and we want you to like it, too. Give us a holler. Tell us what you think we should do next in the comments section. Thanks, guys. See ya.